Hello again, it's Friday and I'm Maurice Barrett and I've got another food for thought for you. I've called this God of the Second Chance. You know, we have a wonderful God. He's merciful, he's gracious. And more than that, he's a good father. Therefore, he treats us like any good father would. If we call by God, then God wants to perfect us. He doesn't want to destroy us, so everything he does is for our own good. And as with any good father, he'll chastise us if we're not obedient. And it's part of the process of maturity. That's why we chastise our children. We want them to grow up and be mature. Well, Hebrews 12, verse 5 to 10 clearly explains this. And have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as children? My son, despise not the chastenings of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you with be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. So that's pretty plain, isn't it? You don't belong to God if you, you won't let him chastise you. Furthermore, we had fathers in our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our spirit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. He's a good father. And we do make mistakes. We act in the flesh instead of the spirit. That's everyone, including me. And God gives us a second chance, as he did with Peter. Peter was weak and acted according to the flesh. He denied Jesus and rather than suffer with him. But Jesus gave him a second chance. He gave him a second call. He did a miracle again to prove that he, he wanted to call him and use him. And he elevated him after his failure, after he'd acted in the flesh and denied Jesus. He elevated him to become a shepherd from a fisherman, feed, uh, Fishers of men, he told Peter his first call. The second call said, feed my sheep. So now elevated him to be a shepherd, which is a more important position. So the mistake wasn't a problem. It was part of his learning curve. And God always gives you a second chance when you make mistakes. Abram acted in the flesh until he produced Isaac. But there was no recrimination from God. The fact that he, he lied, or a white lie, if there's such a thing. Uh, he told Abimelech and Pharaoh that Sarah was his sister. Well, she was his half-sister, but she was his wife, and he should have told Abimelech. It, it nearly caused uh, the seed of Isaac to be uh, challenged. He was learned, just like Peter was. You know, mistakes are part of our learning process and shouldn't condemn us so long as we act in faith. However, sometimes, and I'm including myself, as with any child, we're disobedient to God in ignorance or with knowledge. And God, as a good father, will chasten us for our own good. Israel acted out of disobedience when they refused to go in the promised land. It wasn't a suggestion. They were told to conquer it and they refused. Well, they didn't get a second chance. They wandered 40 years in the wilderness. That was chastisement. King Saul didn't get a second chance. He was told to wipe out the Amalekites and he didn't. He only did 90% of it. And he disobeyed God and his instructions. The kingdom was taken from Saul. He didn't get a second chance. Rebellion always receives punishment because it's the spirit of witchcraft. Weakness gets a second chance because it's not rebellion, it's weakness. So the conclusion, we can't use the flesh to justify disobedience. We can't say, well, it was a mistake. 
Disobedience is disobedience. It's not a mistake. Mistakes are okay. So how do we measure our obedience? Simple, from the Word of God. Not from your church, not from your doctrines, not from your traditions of the denominations, not from me. Check the Word of God. There's more instructions and commandments in the New Testament than there is in the Old. Instructions in the Bible are not suggestions, they're commandments. They have to be obeyed or we're being disobedient and that's serious. Well, the time's gone. I hope I've provoked you again. Have a wonderful, blessed and obedient week and keep thinking.